Hi again, Charlotte Harrington, LLMSW, here of Stillwaters Counseling. You're tuning into part two of our mini series, How to Talk to Your Kids So Your Kids Will Talk to You. If you missed part one, please be sure to watch by clicking the link below. In the first video, we covered how challenging it can be for caregivers to get children and teens to engage in conversations. Strategies were provided to help kids open up and feel heard and understood, including validating feelings, opinions, asking open-ended questions, and giving recognition for efforts and successes. Today, we will take it a step further and handle any fears kids may have regarding COVID and any other areas of their life they may need help with problem solving. While it's important to provide empathetic statements and validate feelings, you can also correct misinformation, provide more support, and avenues to problem solve in developmentally appropriate ways. For example, if a kid is saying, everyone in my entire school is sick. It's just a matter of time until I am too. You can say, I hear you. You're worried about getting sick. It feels like everyone else is right now. Your child will actually feel safer knowing that you are listening and providing a space to explore their feelings. Supporting them is the first step. You can later ask or redirect them with something like, would it be helpful to brainstorm some ways to help you feel safer at school? This connect and redirect technique was pioneered by Dr. Dan Siegel, and it gently offers problem solving, as well as providing space to express their feelings from the emotional part of their brain before activating the rational thinking part. Once your child or teen is calm, you can then correct any misinformation. For example, sounds like you needed to talk about why you were worried. It's easy to feel like everyone is sick, but there are actually a lot of healthy kids too. What do you think you might be able to do to protect yourself at school? Or what else would help you feel safer? If the conversation begins to get off track, try and find something positive to focus on. In nurtured heart parenting approach, we call this lowering the rope. Another way to build rapport with your child or teen is to validate not only their feelings, but also their accomplishments and efforts, as discussed in the first video. So even if your child is struggling, find something positive you can comment on. You can also offer support. Consider the following situation. Parent, you've been working hard to stay organized this week by filling out your planner. I'm proud of you. Kid, thanks, I'm trying. I have a lot of homework lately. Parent, it does sound like a lot of homework. This shows you're tuned in and listening. Kid, yeah, it's annoying. Last year, I didn't have nearly this much. Parent, I get it. But how have you been able to handle it so far? Or? Would you like to talk about it and brainstorm how to approach the amount of homework you have this year? Or would you like some suggestions? This shows you're tuned in and curious, but supportive. Your child will be much more likely to open up and to take your supportive ways seriously rather than dismissing you if you start with trying to offer support before validating. And sometimes it's important to remember that kids just need a safe place to express how they feel and the parent or guardian or caregiver is usually the best place to start. Other examples of what you can do to be supportive once kids start to open up and you've provided some empathy include, what can I do to support you this year? Or, tell me something I can do differently for you than what I've already been doing. Or, if I understand correctly, you want me to? Or, it sounds like you would feel if I did we would love to hear what you think of this video series and if you use any of the techniques to communicate with your kids so they will keep talking to you. And if you're a kid watching this, please let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.